Hey everyone, so today we are going to talk about normal approximations to binomial. Now in earlier lecture we talked about binomial distribution as well as standard normal distribution or Z distribution. Now there is a very nice connection between these two distribution. Now what is that connection? Now see in binomial distribution if you recall our X was a discrete random variable whereas for normal distribution it was a continuous random variable. But still there is a nice connection. Okay, but still whenever you want to solve a binomial problem, then under nice condition, one can always use Z distribution to solve binomial distribution problem. Okay, so how that can be done? I will tell you in some time with the help of examples. But before that, let us try to see how this is possible. And to give you a motivation or to give you the explanation, I am going to take the help of calculus. And once you will see that how calculus comes into picture, you will say it's very obvious. Okay, so and earlier actually we have seen that why how calculus is coming into picture because probably it is nothing but area under the curve for nice functions. Okay, so suppose if you have a function then what is if I call this as x1 and if I call this as x2 then what is integration x1 to x2 f of x dx whatever the number you get that number is nothing but the area under the curve. Okay. Now suppose your f is a pdf that means your f is non-negative and integration minus infinity to infinity f of x dx is 1 then this quantity if your f is satisfying those two condition then this quantity is also equal to the probability random variable x is taking the value from x1 to x2. So we can say this is one connection that probability is nothing but the area. Now. If you recall little bit of calculus, well, I have talked about this in very detail uh, in one of my earlier lecture. So link you can find in the description. So do have a look. But just for the sake of completion, let me try to explain it over here. Okay, I'll give you a brief idea. Now, how do you find area under the curve? So if you recall, the idea was given by Riemann. What Riemann said to find the area under the curve is same as you approximate the area with the help of the rectangles okay so like if you take like suppose if you take this as a rectangle this as a rectangle this as a rectangle and this as a rectangle then you can see area of rectangle is almost the same as area under the curve but this is not a good approximation so what Riemann said you further do the partition you for you increase the number of rectangles and then one can observe that the area of the rectangles, sum of the areas of the rectangles is almost equal to the area under the curve. When you increase the number of rectangles, the approximations becomes more and more good. Let me try to show you this with the help of a software. So here if you see this uh, diagram, so I went to GeoGebra website and here you can see that uh, the area under the curve, that is the integral is 7.28, so this is the curve. And there is the interval and the lower sum that means the sum of this lower rectangles which you can see over here is nothing but 5.73 so here you can see the difference is large okay so almost like 1.8 or 1.9 something 1.7 whatever so when you are in calculus what does this n equal to 5 represents it represents the number of partitions for the interval a and b now we are in the world of probability so here you can see like you can take n equal to 5 means your binomial random variable x has 5 outcomes x equal to 1, x equal to 2 up to x equal to 5 and that's why you have these 5 rectangles. Now here you can see the difference is large when your n is small. But when you increase your n you can see the sum of the areas of rectangles is little bit closer to the area under the curve and you can see here the answer as well lower sum is 6.89 and, and integral is actual answer is 7.28. You increase your n more you can see the area of the rectangles coming closer to the area under the curve. From the diagram also you can see and on the right side you can actually see. Now the difference is hardly 0.21. If you go till n equal to 50 then the difference is hardly 0.17 and you can see from the diagram also the sum of the areas of rectangles is very much near to the area under the curve. Similarly now if I take n equal to 5000 or 10,000 or 1 lakh or billion or in million then you can see that the difference will become smaller and smaller. That's why for the larger n, the area under the curve is approximately same as the sum of the areas of the rectangle. So I hope you have got a little bit of idea. And if you still want, as, as I said earlier, the link is there in the description. You can see a detailed lecture on how this is done. 
okay now coming back to binomial distribution now this is one way to represent the probability distribution for a binomial random variable okay so like these are the outcomes that the random variable x is taking and these are the probabilities okay these are our pi's probabilities another way was what with the help of the histogram you take 0.5 here 0.5 here and then you draw this rectangle 1.5 to 2.5 you get this rectangle 2.5 to 3.5 you get another rectangle so this was another way to represent the binomial distribution with the help of the rectangles and then the probability is same as the area of the rectangle why because here the length is one and the breadth which is nothing but the height is nothing but the probability so area of the rectangle is same as the probability that the random variable will take the one of the values and now suppose you are getting suppose you get a nice normal curve now suppose this is a normal curve you are getting now 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 you can compare right earlier we saw area under the curve we approximate with the help of rectangles now here also you are having a curve and here also you are having the rectangles so curve is the normal curve for the standard normal distribution and the rectangles are coming from the binomial distribution and that's why this connection connection between the normal and the binomial okay now here you can see if i want to find the probability that x will take the value say whatever uh, if i take 4 then i know it is nothing but the area of this rectangle right it is the area of this rectangle but if you also observe if i so this was by binomial distribution this is nothing but the area of the rectangle area of rectangle but now if i want to find if i want to take the help of the normal distribution that means i will integrate okay so then what i will take when i want to integrate i can't integrate from 4 to 4 because for pdf probability for a single value is always zero so i can't integrate from 4 to 4 so what i do is since this is 4 you go half point back and half point ahead because that is how you are getting the rectangle over here so what to do is so you take the range of x from 3.5 to 4.5 and you integrate from 3.5 to 4.5 your pdf so but this is nothing but that means probability it is z is taking the value from z1 to z2 so you find the z1 score for this you find the z2 score for this how do you find the z score x minus mu upon sigma so for this you have the z1 and for this you have the z2 now you go to the standard normal distribution table and we know how to find this probability z less equal z2 minus probability z less equal z1 once again i am repeating so i want to find the probability for x equal to 4 one way is by the binomial distribution it is the area of this rectangle but you can see area of the rectangle is almost same as area under the curve when i'm looking about area under the curve this part missed away this part missed away but then you can see at the top this part comes into the picture so it's almost the same not equal but almost the same so this was the first way and this is the second way by taking area under the curve x is taking the value 3.5 to 4.5 but then i want to go into z distribution so for that i will find the corresponding z1 and z2 score for this and how do you find the z score if you recall it was x minus mu upon sigma what is mu mu is nothing but np the mean for binomial distribution is np and what is the sigma it is square root of npq where q is nothing but 1 minus p so once you have an x distribution that means the binomial distribution you find the corresponding z distribution using that formula you try to find this answer probability using the standard normal table the only thing to take care is uh, you take 0.5 and 0.5 there's only one thing one has to take care of and now uh, same as the earlier theory the more the number of rectangles the more good the approximation you get so when your n is very large and you have a question on binomial distribution one can always use normal distribution because you get a good approximation so there's the one condition so whenever you say tossing a coin or whatever uh, experiment or the problem is there if you see n is large like 80 100 200 thousand one lakh any big number to solve that binomial problem you take the help of the standard normal distribution okay that's one thing second thing when to use like the table that is being provided in the exam usually the table will have till n equal to 20 trials or n equal to 15 so whenever in the question you have more number of trials you can think of using this approximation 
थर्ड कंडीशन सम ऑथर ऑल्सो सेज लाइक दिस इफ यूर एन पी एंड एन क्यू दे आर ग्रेटर इक्वल फाइव एन इज द नंबर ऑफ ट्रायल्स पी इज द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ सक्सेस क्यू इज वन माइनस पी इफ बोथ द क्वांटिटी आर ग्रेटर इक्वल फाइव सम ऑथर ऑल्सो से ग्रेटर देन टेन देन वन कैन थिंक ऑफ यूजिंग नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन टू सॉल्व बायनॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन प्रॉब्लम सो दिस आर द थ्री कंडीशन दैट वन कैन थिंक ऑफ and that's obvious right one can't always use normal distribution why one can't use all one can't always use because for example like if you have a probability distribution like this over here and then if i try to draw the rectangle this is the rectangle i get okay this is the rectangle i'm getting and if i try to draw the normal curve suppose this is the normal curve can i get a good approximation answer is no because here area of rectangle is this huge whereas area under the curve is only this much that's why these three conditions are required so under these three conditions you can think of using the normal distribution whenever you have a question on binomial distribution and don't forget to take this increment and decrement of 0.5 okay so that's the idea let me show you the table that walpol has provided so you can compare that when n is very large the distributions the answers are very close to each other so here if you see here in this scenario like if you see the last table the last where p is 0.0 0.5 and n is 10 so your n is small but the probability of success is 0.5 so you can see the difference between the binomial answer and the normal answer the difference is very less it is like 0.0012 is very less here also you can see at the bottom here it is 1 and here you are getting 0.9997 so difference is 0.0003 which is very less so even though your n is small but the probability of success is 0.5 or close to 0.5 the answers are almost the same but if your n is small see the first table and the probability is 0.05 then you can see the difference right what difference you observe here here you can see the difference is large large as in as compared to this difference this difference is very large so you can so when n is small and p is not close to half then you will get some reasonable difference of probabilities but when your n is small and p is close to 0.5 you don't get much of the difference now what was the second scenario i said i said that when your n is very big and then irrespective of the probability of p you get good approximation so like if you see this as the second part when your n is 100 so p is 0.05 so it's not close to half okay but your n is 100 which is big okay, not that big but it is big so you can see the difference is small whereas if you see the difference here difference here is large here is 0.400 something whereas here it is not that much of the difference now again like if you take n equal to 1000 or 10000 difference will be much more smaller so irrespective of the probability of success as your n increases the difference between the binomial and the normal also keeps on decrease okay now let's go for the example now here is a first question so a coin is tossed 400 times now again you can see the number is very big so these are again the problems from the walpole book now you are tossing a coin 400 times and so it's a huge number you can't use binomial distribution table okay so you have to think of normal distribution let x be the random variable counting the number of heads what is the probability that x will take the value from 185 to 210 but now since n is very large you are going to take help of the normal distribution standard normal distribution so what is the first step you do you find the z score okay so to take the help of the z distribution you find z score so z1 in z2 what is the formula x minus mu upon sigma so what is my x now you don't take 185 you take 184.5 half here and half there okay many times people in hurry they take 185 So 184.5 minus NP. What is my N? 400. What is probability of success? 0.5. Because it's a fair coin, so probability of getting ahead is half. Upon square root of N into P into Q. What is Q? 1 minus P. So this is my Z1 score. What is my Z Z2 score? It will be 210.5 into sorry minus NP. So N into P upon square root of the same thing. 400 into half into half. now once you have this so we know that the probability of this is same as probability of z1 and z2 
और वॉट इज दिस प्रोबेबिलिटी जेड इज टेकिंग द वैल्यू लेस इक्वल जेड टू माइनस प्रोबेबिलिटी जेड इज टेकिंग द वैल्यू लेस इक्वल जेड वन एंड वी हैव सीन इन अर्लियर लेक्चर जस्ट सी दैट लेक्चर वे आर हैव टोल्ड हाउ टू फाइंड दिस टू आंसर्स सो द फर्स्ट होमवर्क फॉर यू इज यू टेल मी वट इज द आंसर फॉर द ए पार्ट ओके नो वॉट इज द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट नंबर ऑफ हेड्स आर एक्जैक्टली इक्वल टू टू हंड्रेड एंड फाइव दैट मीन्स नाउ अगेन आई हैव टू यूज दिस जेड वन एंड जेड टू राइट सो स्टैंडर्ड नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सो वॉट विल बी माई जेड वन इट विल बी टू हंड्रेड एंड फोर पॉइंट फाइव माइनस एन पी फोर हंड्रेड इंटू हाफ डिवाइडेड बाई स्क्वेर रूट ऑफ फोर हंड्रेड इंटू हाफ इंटू हाफ वॉट विल बी माई जेड टू इट विल बी टू हंड्रेड एंड फाइव पॉइंट फाइव माइनस एन पी अपॉन स्क्वेर रूट ऑफ एन पी क्यू एंड इन द सेम वे वन कैन सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम सो द सेकेंड होमवर्क इज टेल मी वॉट इज द आंसर फॉर द बी पार्ट ओके वॉट अबाउट द थर्ड वन प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट नंबर ऑफ हेड्स आर लेस देन वन सेवेंटी सिक्स और ग्रेटर देन टू ट्वेंटी सेवन ओके सो फॉर ऑर मीन्स यू हेव टू एड ओवर हियर सो वॉट अबाउट दिस सो फाइंडिंग दिस इज सेम एज प्रोबेबिलिटी जेड इज टेकिंग द वैल्यू लेस इक्वल जेड वन so find the z1 score okay now let's try to solve the c part now just recall what we did in the a part so this was your a question probability 185 less equal x less equal 210 so what you do probability x less equal 210 minus probability of x less equal 184 now what will be our x1 x1 score is 210.5 you always take 0.5 extra because of the rectangular part okay and here also you have 184.5 the 0.5 extra right so this was your x1 x2 and accordingly you find your Z1 and Z2, which will be x1 minus mean upon the variance. Okay, and similarly you find the Z2. Now this is the C part for you. Okay, so what is probability of x less than 176 plus probability of x greater than 227? The first step is you always write in the less equal form so that you will avoid the mistake. So probability of x less equal 175 plus what is probability of x greater than 127? It is 1 minus probability of x less equal 227. So now what will be your x1 score? It will be 175.5. You take the 0.5 extra, and here x2 to be 227.5. And then you find the z1, x1 minus np upon the variance, and you find the z2 score. So finding this quantity is same as probability of z less equal z1 plus 1 minus probability of x less equal z2. Sorry, z less equal z2. So try to solve this and tell me what is the answer for the C question. So here is a homework problem for you. So a process is yielding 10% of the defective items and 100 items are selected from the process. What is the probability that number of defective items ex exceeds 13? So if I call x to be the number of defective, so when I am taking out a defective item, it's a success for me. So question is what is probability of x is greater than 13? Now your n is how much? 100. What is your p? So getting a defective is a success, and 10% are defective. So p is nothing but 0.1. What will be q? 0.9. And finding this is same as 1 minus probability x less equal 13. Now you find the z1 score for this z score for 13. It will be how much? 10.5 minus n p upon square root of n p q. Okay. N is how much? 100. P is 0.1. Q is 0.9. So I hope the idea is clear if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section thank you